So this is our first patient into the workshop. It's an end of three. Oh, is there anything coming out? It's not looking great. It's a bit bitty. It's just jammed. So, let's back off. Will, what would be your suggestion for the first fix? What up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So as you saw in the intro, Andre's got a bit of a problem with his uh, 3D printer, or one of the 3D printers. So we decided it'd be a good idea to do this sort of a diagnosis series. So you can have a look through, see if you've got any similar problems, and hopefully that'll help you sort them out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the video that Andre, aka Immersive Madness, has uploaded to his YouTube channel. And um, sort of go through what I think the problem might be, throw in some tips here and there, and just general diagnosis. So, let's get into it. So here we are then, here's patient number one, it's an end of three, and no doubt there'll be a few more videos to do with this particular one, and then uh, there'll be more printers where we'll go over in the future and stuff, and various upgrades and different things, but anyway, let's just get into it. So this... I must say I like the uh, the, <laughs> the the little fan shroud there. That's cool. First patient into the workshop. It's an end of three, and let's have a closer look. So it looks to have the surface. I believe there's a point four nozzle with an E three D style. Yeah, that looks like an easy b style heater block. I've turned it on, we can see the fan. The Always been a fan of that technology. The fan is working and it has a. I'm sorry, that was terrible. Sort of fang mount on the top with a radial fan. I mean, Wobbly could probably do with something. Um, now, I'm, I'm just going to jump in here. This isn't a problem, which we, or we don't know yet, actually. But um, these are highly recommended. These uh, little metal uh, extruder mechanisms for the Ender 3 and also the CR10. I've got one on my CR10, and they're rather good. They... I don't know, it's, I think it's because they're all just so much more rigid, like the plastic and the original mechanism has some give to it and this seems a bit more rigid and is, is able to, you know, grab hold of the filament. I think the spring's a little bit stronger as well, so uh, highly recommended and they're not very expensive. A metal part for the extruder feed, which is always good. And if we look at the screen, it appears to be registering both... Uh, hot end temperature and the bed temperature so looks like both thermistors are working just saying by the looks of that that actually looks like the th3d firmware because you've got like a custom name and then ender 3 ready and that's normally a th3d thing 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 yeah, teeth thing so uh, let me know andre if that's the case but i'm pretty sure that is the case registering both uh, the hot end temperature and the bed temperature so looks like both thermistors are working and let's give that a bit of a pre-heat, shall we? Well, no, I'll tell you what we'll do first is we will auto-home it just to check all the motors are working. That's it for working fine. Good start. We're all looking good so far. Check if that's heated okay. Okay. So 
the hot ends of temperature, they only took a couple of minutes, and to be quite honest, the beds were getting there, so, I mean, that shows the, uh, it shows, it shows the benefits of a 24 volt system. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good point. Um, a CR10, or the CR10, um, I believe actually both the CR10 and the CR10S are 12 volt systems, which you'd think that's a bit backwards. you think you know, the 24 volt would be on the CR10 and the 12 volt would be on the smaller end of 3, but it's not the case. And uh, yeah, tw uh, 24 volts really does make a difference. It just heats up so much quicker. And what we're going to go over and have a look at what we've got the So uh, we've got, we just got some white PLA. Gonna do is just get it to um, feed some filament out. So I'm literally gonna do that from the preparation screen doing the move access extruder. Ten mil at a time and I'm gonna tell it to squirt out 50. So not a great start. Things coming out. So we can see the wheels going around. So definitely attempting to push. Can I just say, there's a lot. We might see this later on, but there seems to be an awful lot of filament, just strands around there. Can you can you see that? I don't know if you can see. You can see my mouse. You can see my mouse. See, oh, there's um, sort of little bits of chips of filament. That doesn't bode well. That looks like it's been grinding at some point. But we'll we'll, we'll continue watching. They'll seem to be feeding okay. I mean, a telltale sign if you've got this is another good tip. Um, telltale sign if you think you might have a partial clog or anything like that. Then, if the filament kind of comes out, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be so if it comes out straight and goes straight down, uh, although I cannot get make, make there we go, so it kind of goes straight down, um, then you generally good to go. It's when if it kind of goes out and then curls, um. I'm really not doing well with this camera. If it comes some out and then curls up and, and wants to do that as it's coming out the thing and then go down, so it kind of does like that, then that's a telltale sign of a partial clog. But so far, for this, it looks like the nozzle should be okay. I mean, it's not always the case, but it, it, it stands well. Can I just say, don't rec I'd not recommend this. You burn your fingers, huh? So that seems pretty good because it is literally just going straight down. <clears throat> One thing I did notice with that, um, I can't tell, it kind of looks like it might have something on there, but usually around the hot end part you have some sort of insulation, and then that stops, you know, the heat escaping and it keeps the heat where you want it warming up your filament. But um, I can't see any sort of insulation around that, and uh, being as a TH3D style, I'm pretty sure they have um sort of a silicon sock they provide with their oh, my hair's awful um silicon sock they provide with it um i actually have um one for my what's it called balco and um that's a replacement because normally it comes with some ceramic material i'm not really sure what it is but it, it just wraps around it and that'll come off like you change your nozzle a couple of times that'll just come off there's, there's no way of stopping it so that's one thing i've noticed maybe a silicon sock Although it does look like there's something on there. Andre, confirm. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Let's not put that in your fan. Okay, let's do a test print. Okay. So we're going to print up a XYZ 
Yeah, yeah don't, don't worry about those little strands at the start. That's probably where it's just been oozing as it's been warming up. Uh, but that, using, usually with the purge line, that gets pulled off, so that's fine. Level this, but mine is a little bit tweaking. Um, okay, okay. Whoa, yay, yeah, yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Slow down. Christ, how fast is that going on the first layer? Like, can I just say, that might be... I, I mean, I don't think that's... I mean, if there's... Well, we'll just carry on watching, won't we? But um, I don't think that will be a main problem, but that certainly won't help anybody who's struggling with first layer. Don't have your first layers going that fast. You want to, like at least have it half the speed on the first layer so like normally say if you're printing it 30 millimeters per, 30 millimeters per second you want it to be um no you, oh my brain is awful if you're printing it 60 millimeters per second you want it to be 30 millimeters seconds at least i actually run mine at 20 millimeters per second on the first layer and and i basically never I want to say basically never, hardly ever, shall we say, um, get any detachments and stuff like that. Um, the only problem I usually have is with like ABS, which warps like hell anyway. So that's that's a top tip. Slow and warm. on Well, not that's the wrong word. Slow and hot on the first layer. So like whether you print, say if you're printing it 210, your first layer might be 215, say, and then run it half speed and you'll have no problems with adhesion. Oh, and bed levelling is a big thing as well. <clears throat> yeah, that is going way too fast for a first layer, in my opinion, but... See, that's it. The reason it's slowed down there, I'm guessing it's doing the now doing the wall, and the wall speed is slower than that brim speed, but still, that, in my opinion, is too fast. It's not looking great. It's a bit bitty. And the height looks okay. <clears throat> Yeah, that does look rather threadbare, doesn't it? A bit bitty, like uh, Andre said. Well, if I go, we'll come back and have a look at the interview. So, here we are, 11 minutes. Ooh, that, that, that noise. That, uh, if anybody's got a CR10, then you know that noise very well. It's, it's, it's one of the, I think, I think it's one of the tensioners or something like that. When it does a fast move, it kind of... It doesn't skip, but it just doesn't like it. <laughs> it seems to vibrate, and it sends a horrible noise. Minutes later, and, well, yeah, it looks to me like we've got a bit of a problem. Oh, yeah, so it's just completely stopped. So what's causing that? Well, you can still see. Gears are turning. So that, that, that explains, see I said this earlier didn't I, that explains all the chips of plastic around there because what it's doing, it's trying to shove the filament in, it's just met an obstruction, obstruction whatever that is, and um, it's now just grinding filament and it's just, it'll if you look on the filament at that point it'll have like a, if that's a filament it'll have like that shaped divot out of the side of it, so not good. Feel the filament. Well, what will be your suggestion for the first fix? Hmm, interesting. So, normally I'd say that sort of a situation, right, I'm going to flick this back over to here, and then, <clears throat> normally I'd say from this sort of situation that it's heat creep, like sort of the, you know the bit at the bottom, I wonder, actually, do you know what, I'll switch back to, 
I'll cut back through the video and we can see bit, different bits and stuff. Uh, so you see the hot end down here. This is sort of where your nozzle would screw into and everything. You have a little sort of thermistor that goes in the side. That's to tell the temperature of your hot end. And you also have the heater cartridge which normally goes through um, for the cheaper Chinese machines. And I think for an official, um, what's it called, E3D hot end it actually goes i think a different direction if i believe um because then that way the, the actual heater cartridge is next to the oh, i'm banging the mic now um the heater cartridge is next to the filament path and it uh, uh, gives a lot better heat transfer between the heater cartridge and the filament but if you start having that heat start creeping up the throat into the cold end part which is where you want it to be cold that's where your extruder would be pushing it in if you've got a direct drive or where the bowden tube would go in if you've got a bowden style which is this is a bowden style um if you start having the heat creep up into the heat sink part of the cold cold end then it'll start melting in that point and because the way the um inside it will kind of go in a little bit wider and then it'll kind of narrow out in with a chamfered and then it will go down in and it'll start clogging there it'll start um sort of melting too early clogging that part and that's where you get this sort of thing so if you see there you can clearly see the fan is working and that is the um fan that would blow air through the that heatsink area and keeping that part cool so Normally when this sort of thing happens, it's that fan, not, uh, it's either that fan, uh, it's not always that, but uh, it's normally that fan not pushing enough air through to cool that fast enough, or um, it's the sort of design of the cold end part, you know, where the heat sink part is or whatever, if that's not doing its job, if that's not taking heat away fast enough, then the same thing will happen. So another point on it being a... E3D style, if it's not an official E3D hot end, the clones tend to, because they're a lot cheaper, they don't go through so many manufacturing processes and they don't necessarily make it to the same tolerances that E3D do. That's why E3D costs a lot more than the clones, of course. But that in itself might be a problem because if the style of the throat where it goes into and the the style of the you know the actual heat sink it's trying to cool is not very good then that will allow the heat to creep up and melt in further up in the actual throat of the um extrude mechanism so if i had to hazard a guess i would probably start there so maybe have a look, take it apart, um, so take the fan off the front, check that fan's actually blowing any decent amount of air, that's a good start, like I've just have it on the deck somewhere and just put your hand next to it and if it, fe if it feels like it's blowing next to nothing then that is a potential um, as to what could be causing it. Um, the other thing I can think of is maybe if the fan's round the wrong way, I mean it's unlikely but if the fan is blowing outwards rather than inwards, then that would certainly cause a clog. Um, and then the other thing is just to check to see whether you have an official E3D one or not, and uh, sort of check, have a look some look pictures online and see whether there's any sort of um, compare the two for the the one you have the E3D you know. Oh, clone, whatever, whichever one you might have. Compare that to an, a, a real official E3D and just see where the differences lie because it could well be just the heat sink design of that that's causing your problems. So, yeah. If you've got any spares or if you've got any other odd bits for an extruder mechanism, maybe if you've got an original sort of CR10 hot end lying around, try that. Um and that would at least eliminate it being the extruder at the top. Um, yeah, that's quite a lot of stuff. Try that first, um, and also, if, if you're going to take it apart while you're at it, have a look at that Bowden tube, because it looked like a Capricorn. Um, Capricorn being a brand that uh, they make the Bowden tubes to a higher tolerance, so there's less slip inside, so when you're printing certain materials, 
um, when you're doing retractions it won't sort of bunch up inside um, it'll tend to just retract back and forth is it, it, it leaves a lot less slop in your print um, where was it uh, there, there. See, there's a Capricorn tube. Uh, it does seem to be a, an official Capricorn because Capricorn tube is quite a dark blue. Um, and so you can kind of tell some of the ripoffs because they tend to be a lighter blue. And if you look at official Capricorn, it is uh, sort of this darker blue colour. No bad. Sorry about that. Telephone. Yeah, so it does look like a um, a natural cap proper Capricorn. So um, check that. Just make sure there's no obstructions in there, or um, you know, run a clean bit of filament through it and see how it runs through. If that's dragging like all hell, then that's also not going to help. But uh, yeah, if I had to hazard a guess, it would be heat creep, definitely. But yeah, Andre, if you let me know how you get on, uh, do me another response video and then sort of show me what you've been fiddling about at. That'll be very nice. And what I'll do is I'll put all these uh, in like a big playlist. So um, Andre's original, you know, problem video, my response, and blah, 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 blah. It, almost like a conversation style thing. I'll sort of edit them down to be as, you know, concise as possible so you're not sat there for hours. But um, yeah, so... Keep tuned, and uh, if you're having any of these sort of style problems, I'll try and name each of the videos accordingly as well. So if you're looking through and you can be like, oh, okay, this is exactly what I'm having, and then hopefully that helps you out. But anyway, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoy, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot, and I shall see you next time. Ta-da! So as you saw, it the... It, nah, uh, Andre and I have decided to do this sort of a... Uh, <laughs> right. What the fuck was that, Will? <laughs>